Okay, thank you. So thank you for uh, your invitation to all the organizers to this uh, very, uh, very nice workshop. So what I'm going to present today is the, uh, together with Monica, is our recent work in the last years on uh, the robotic sixth uh, finger, which is actually a supernumerary limb, a supernumerary finger. So the main motivation of our research was mainly due to the fact that there has been, I mean, in the, uh, in the years, there has been a lot of research on uh, prosthesis, uh, but very, very few uh, research, I mean, at least in terms of very uh, wearable, portable and uh, usable devices for people that got uh, a stroke, that had a stroke. For example, here in this case, you see Alessandro, a stroke patient who is not able uh, to uh, do by manual task anymore because he got a stroke and on the right arm is not able, you know, to control things like that. Indeed, there are much more uh, stroke cases uh, all over the world per year than, uh, than amputee. So we were really understanding why there was no, uh, I mean, uh, kind of uh, uh, portable and wearable research. Actually, there has been a lot of research there in terms of uh, exoskeletons for stroke uh, people and even special uh, tools, but not something really, really uh, really portable. Actually, this kind of exoskeleton, you can use it uh, in the rehabilitation facilities, not a tool at home or uh, somewhere where you want to, to use it. Well, uh, if you think about the, 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 your hand and if you think about what you want to recover in this of kind of cases, what you really want to recover is basically the ability of grasping things because he wants to grasp with the right hand uh, the bottle again. And indeed, what you really need, and this is actually the idea of our uh, lab, is just to develop a six finger, an extra finger, an extra limb that allows the user, like Alexandro, uh, to make an hybrid grasp, that is an hybrid grasp between the, the, uh, the you know, the, the, the residual part of the hand that is used like a palm and an additional an additional time. This was an initial design and I'm sure that Monica will get into that and especially now we designed a soft uh, finger which adapts to any kind of, uh, um, of the shape of, uh, of objects. You see like in this case for example you see a stroke patient that is using uh, the, the sixth finger to open a bean can and he's doing it uh, simply controlling uh, the extra finger and doing an hybrid grasp between the, the residual part of the hand and the extra finger. Again, in this case, is controlling the extra finger. The extra finger is soft, so adapts to any shape. Is only one motor and is under actuated. So, in some similar, uh, it's a sort of soft robot. Also, in this case, that takes the shape of the object he's grasping uh, with the with the with the hand. And also in this other, even more particular case, is using the uh, the six finger to just grasp um, the paste, the toothpaste of the toothbrush. And you can do a, you know, by manual manipulation again, by using uh, the grasping uh, augmented with the extra finger and uh, the left hand. So this is very useful. So they are using uh, uh, the, this is, a, I mean, this is good just actually, uh, this is, you know, a franchise arm test that allow uh, to tell us what they can do with the robotic six finger. For sure, they can stabilize a ruler like they can do without the extra finger, but now they can grasp a cylinder, they can pick up a glass, uh, they will remove a sprunge, they will come by in a second, I will see you, I will show you how they can do it. Uh, we are quite obsessed by the wearability design of the of the of the finger, and the, the the finger is just a bracelet that goes in the docking position just when it should be used, like in this case. So you just wrap around uh, the arm to design uh, a bracelet, and uh, even in this case, in terms of interfaces, we are working on that, and the, the most recent interface that we developed is a, 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 an EMG signal embedded in a hat. In particular, is getting the muscle of the frontalis muscle that are very interesting for the control of uh, uh, the extra finger because they are not used too much for other tasks. And by just recognizing the switch, uh, is able, for example, you see here, 
by uh, contracting uh, the frontalis muscle, we generate a flexion of the motion of the, of the finger. You see, he's moving the eye brush, and as soon as he moves the eye brush, the extra finger uh, starts uh, the motion, the motion of the, of the, of the robot. We are also using uh, up the feedback to give a sense of awareness of what's going on there, but it's not the time uh, to give uh, the detail here. Then we are integrating the arm support with uh, the extra finger you see here. For example, the arm support in this case is supporting the weight of the robot. And this is the extra finger that is doing the, the tasks uh, that we were, we were asking for. This is the head that is controlling the head through the EMG, just an EMG, and uh, very interesting results. So these are the tests that typically they are using with the, with the prosthesis. And in this case, they are also able to comp A because they can compensate for the lack of, uh, you know, muscle activation for gravity compensation. So the, the robot is compensating the gravity is a passive robot, the blue one, while the sixth finger is uh, doing the most of the job for, for grasping. Let me just uh, uh, finish uh, the, the, my part of the talk and then I will leave the stage to Monica with a video where Alessandro uh, is uh, able to control the boat uh, again. He had a sailing boat and he was not able to control the sailing boat anymore because of the stroke. It's in Italian, but uh, the captions are in English. So stay with me one minute, please. Io sono Alessandro Bondi, eh, ho 52 anni e ho avuto 4 anni fa un ictus. Ho sofferto per molto tempo, poi ho visto un barlume di speranza nella tecnologia che mi ha portato a sperare di tornare su una barca a vela. Mi sono avvicinato all'equipe all di Domenico Pratichizzo, che è l'ingegnere che ha inventato il sesto dito. Nel caso di Alessandro è estremamente utile perché creerà una presa di tipo ibrido, una presa fatta dall'uomo e dal robot. Consiste in tre parti principali, un motore che attraverso dei tendini trasmette il movimento a questa parte rigida e flessibile che consente di afferrare degli oggetti adattandosi a qualunque forma. Mi rende in qualche modo un cyborg. This, uh, this uh, product has become, uh, sorry, this idea has become, uh, is becoming a product. Uh, thanks to a startup. This is the latest design of uh, the finger. So it's much more, more engineered. And, uh, but uh, let me give the, leave the stage to Monica that will add uh, more details on the technology and the design of the extra finger. Thank you for your attention. We'll see you in a while for the questions in case you have it. Okay. Thank you, Domenico. So I'm going to share my presentation now. <clears throat> okay, can you see my presentation? Is it? Uh, yeah, we can see it. Okay, so I'm uh, doing a, a focus on uh, the main technical features and the history be behind uh, this uh, design. And uh, the motivation, as uh, Domenico uh, introduced, was to um, provide a support for people that uh, uh, lost the uh, possibility to use uh, their upper limb and uh, in particular the, their hand. And uh, yeah, starting from uh, the very beginning of uh, the story, the first problem that we analyzed was uh, uh, yeah, to design uh, an extra finger. And uh, the first prototype uh, that we developed was uh, a modular uh, finger with uh, uh, a certain number, it was not uh, modular, so we, we could uh, choose the, the number of uh, modules. In this figure, there are four modules. And uh, in this case, we used a, a controller 
to uh, map the, the motion of the human hand onto uh, this uh, augmented uh, system composed of the human and uh, the robotic finger. So the starting point was uh, uh, the development of a mapping uh, between uh, the human hand and uh, the extra finger with an healthy hand. Uh, the starting point was uh, a mapping procedure that we uh, developed before for uh, mapping uh, human hand uh, motions to structures that are not anthropomorphic. And uh, this mapping idea was based on, the, um, on finding an equivalent transformation that the motion of the hand produced and to replicate the same uh, transformation on the eventually non-anthropomorphic hand. Regarding the extra finger, what, uh, what's the difference? Is that the input space is the human hand, but the out output space is uh, shared with uh, the robotic finger. So uh, what we have he here is that we define a set of uh, reference points uh, on the human hand and on the reference hand. Then we consider a motion of the human hand and we evaluate a mean transformation that can be, for example, a rigid roto translation plus a deformation that can be represented as a linear uh, transformation. We evaluate the mean transformation that is uh, produced by the human hand on this virtual uh, object, let's say, and we uh, uh, map the displacement of the um, extra finger with this uh, uh, transformation. Okay, here I reported the, the mathematical uh, relationship. However, the story is this one. We, we met, we find a uh, I'm sorry, you're muted right now. It was my fault. I tried to mute myself, but I muted Monica. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. Okay. And... Uh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so I can, okay. So, um, with this uh, procedure, we, we could uh, map any motion of uh, the human hand onto the um, robotic thing, extra finger. But the problem that, that we wanted to solve was different because we wanted to uh, make a device for a person that cannot use his or her hand. So we have not the, uh, the motion of the human part. And another problem is that uh, a device that, like this uh, has problem with, for, um, regarding the cost because uh, we have uh, uh, many actuators, is uh, a, a structure that is not robust and also the control may be uh, complex. So to bring uh, our device out of the lab, we had to make some uh, simplification and also some uh, improvement in the design and the, in the um, robustness in particular. So we uh, choose a, an underactuated solution with only one motor and uh, then the, the motion is just open and closed. In this uh, uh, video um, you can see uh, the, the, final, uh, <laughs> the final release of the extra finger. In this case is uh, is actuated by, uh, is controlled by uh, a ring instead of the e cup that Domenico uh, showed before. So regarding the structure is uh, still modular and is composed of a combination of rigid and uh, compliant elements. So in this uh, slide you can see the light gray elements are quite stiff while the dark gray elements are flexible and uh, they are connected through uh, uh, a tendon. So when, when you uh, pull the tendon, you get a closure of the motion. The tendon is connected to the motor. The structure is again uh, modular 
and uh, the, the, the shape of the closure is, is defined by the, um, the stiffness of each element. But how we can um, bring the, the let's say, complexity of the mapping uh, procedure to uh, this uh, simple uh, structure? Of course, we cannot get any motion like, like we do like we did with the fully actuated. So we have to choose one possible motion. Since we intend to use this uh, type of device for grasping, um, for grasping uh, tasks, we choose uh, the first postural synergy like a, a paradigmatic motion. So the motion that we decided to, uh, to map with uh, the procedure that I uh, introduced before was applied not to any motion of the hand, but only to the first synergy. Then, uh, since we have a, a, a finger in which we have uh, some uh, compliant element, once we have uh, a closure motion, we can define a corresponding stiffness profile. So, uh, starting from the QR, it is uh, the, the, the joint values, corresponding to the mapping that we have defined, we can find a profile of stiffness values. So, uh, yeah, th this is uh, what we get with a uh, simulation uh, in uh, yeah, an experimental simulation compared with, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> an experimental test with the extra finger that we designed uh, at the end compared with uh, a stiff, uh, um, the theoretical profile following the first postural synergy. But with a, with a uh, modular structure, how we can differentiate uh, the stiffness of each uh, joint? For this, uh, we, <coughs> we uh, use the possibility uh, that we get, thanks to additive manufacturing technologies, to change the infill density of, uh, of the material. In particular, we use TPU as material and changing the, um, the infill density percentage, we can regulate the, uh, the young modulus of the material and then we can get different stiffness value. Stiffness values that were defined according to the uh, previous uh, procedure. And in the, in the lower diagram here, you can see what happens if you choose a, a random, let's say, not random, if you choose the same stiffness for all the joint, you see these values, this curve represents the trajectory of the fingertip changing the stiffness of uh, the passive element. So the magenta curve is uh, uh, obtained with the same stiffness value for, the, for all the joints, while uh, the, red, um, the red curve is obtained with uh, the stiffness, the stiffness uh, uh, value evaluated according to the procedure that I explained before, and the uh, blue curve is uh, the nominal traje trajectory. So, playing with the parameter of uh, uh, the 3D printer, so the infill density percentage, we can uh, simulate a closure motion that is close to the first uh, synergy of the human hand. So this is uh, the device that uh, Domenico already uh, presented before. Here you can see uh, different configuration that you can obtain uh, thanks to the uh, compliance of uh, the passive joints. And another step to increase the payload of uh, the device, we recently uh, investigated the possibility to double the, the extra finger. So <laughs> it's no more a six finger, we have a, also a seventh finger in this configuration. Of course, if you double the, the configuration, you have, you have a different possible, possible uh, configuration that you can uh, use. Here we analyzed some possible configuration and for each of uh, these co configurations, we can uh, apply the mapping procedure and then uh, design the, the stiffness of the joints. 
of course, if we have a double uh, or in general a multiple finger configuration, we need also a differential system that is needed to decouple the motion of uh, the fingers. Otherwise, once one finger touch, uh, touches something, uh, the other one will stop. In this, in this way, with a differential uh, mechanism, we can differentiate the, the closure motion of uh, the fingers. Of course, even in this case, since the system has to be wearable, has to be as light as possible, also the design of uh, the differential system was, uh, was done such that it was uh, as, as light as possible. Okay, here I summarized the main, uh, the main features of uh, the, the fingers. Uh, sorry, I cannot read. Okay, so for the single configuration, we have um, an overall payload of a two uh, dot four kilos. While uh, with the um, with the double configuration, we have a, a higher uh, payload thanks to the the, the higher um, surface of contact and, and the, the higher possibility, the, the higher uh, stability. And okay, so I can go. Okay, here you can see the prototype of the double configuration. This is the closure motion evaluated with the first uh, synergy. And uh, okay, okay, this is uh, the differential that is uh, running. And this uh, is what happens when I grasp uh, an object. And, uh, yeah, you can see that thanks to the differential, you, you can uh, adapt the, the device to different shapes. And yeah, this is an example in which with the same uh, device you grasp uh, two different objects in a um, enough stable way. And this is a, a, an object that has not a regular uh, surface, so you can see how the device can adapt to different shapes. Okay. okay, this is another example with a bottle of uh, water. Okay, and uh, yeah, here I summarized uh, the, the main publication that uh, in, in which we, we collected all these uh, studies, all our uh, developments. And uh, yes, uh, I, I am arrived to the conclusion of my presentation. So uh, what uh, I can say is that this is a, a quite recent, but very interesting and uh, I think also impactful uh, area of uh, research. And uh, what we did is uh, that we developed some uh, uh, prototypes of uh, robotic extra fingers that can be used uh, as a compensatory, compensatory uh, devices for uh, upper limb, people with upper limb uh, problems. Uh, we also uh, made some uh, uh, tests with uh, patients with this uh, type of device and uh, yeah, we are, of course, we are going on now with uh, the development. We are testing it with different type of, uh, of problems. Uh, and we also uh, extending the, the research also to other uh, human robot interaction uh, scenarios. Okay, thank you very much for, for uh, the opportunity 
present uh, to this interesting uh, workshop. Thank you for the organization and uh, you all of you for the attention. If you have any question, I'm here.